Hi everybody, welcome. It's Dr. Gold, welcome to Inspired Stretch. Right now I am the Switch Witch. You haven't heard of the Switch Witch. I am actually a very good witch. I come to your children's homes, boys and girls, and when they put their candy off to the side, I switch it for a favorite toy. So I take the candy and then they get this awesome toy that they love. So come join me, have a fun time. This is awesome. Again, I'm the switch witch, good witch, who takes your kids all their, if they go trick or treating, takes the candy, but I instead replace it with an amazing toy that they love. Mwah. Or money, if they want something else. <laughs> they can leave little preferences, that's okay. <laughs> so we are gonna start our yoga class. Are you ready? We're gonna work on our hips today, opening up that low back. So Dr. Gold is in the house now, woo! <laughs> Whoa, <let's... laughs> All right, so let's get moving. Remember those hips, it feels good to shake those hips a little bit, roll them out, and then roll them on the other side. We're actually gonna come down to the floor. If for whatever reason, the floor is not your cup of tea or it doesn't feel as comfortable, you can do this in a chair too, some modifications. But I, I think you'll find it really nice and useful. So do your best to come down gently to the floor. You can do coming down to a squat if that's in your practice. Remember squatting heels. You wanna have your weight in the heels. So sitting back in the bum, that'll protect those knees, ears over your shoulders, and then sit back and then just gently, gently come down. If there's another that way that's more comfortable for you, feel free to go there. So we're gonna be in table position. You can pleat your mat or just fold it over and give a little cushion to your knees or fold a towel or a blanket, that's fine too, if you need that. My hands are underneath my shoulders, my knees underneath my hips. My body's about hip width apart. So if you can see me from the front, shoulders and my hands right underneath. So from here, I'm gonna start with a little cat cow. So we're gonna just melt that low back, melt it, gaze up with a big smile, inhale, and then exhale round as you gaze inward towards your belly button. Let's inhale, gaze up, exhale, release. Good, feel a nice stretch in that low back. And we're just gonna gently circle those hips side to side. And I talked about a little ghoulish class today. So what we're gonna do is go say, <laughs> so I want you to think of your favorite witch-like laugh. <laughs> go ahead and do that right now. <laughs> we're gonna have some fun with this class, okay? So um, to strengthen the back, we're gonna actually lift out the leg. And on your next breath, we're gonna lift out the arm. So do your best with this. Reach out the arm and the leg. If you can't do both, just do one at a time. And then slowly release down, switch sides. Inhale, exhale. Good, inhale, and slowly exhale. See if you can raise the arm and the leg a little bit higher. Good, slowly release. Back side to side. We're gonna step the right leg forward. Good, and I'm gonna face you so you can see what I'm doing. We're actually gonna lengthen that leg. So a little bend in that knee, point the toes up, and we're gonna reach forward. So I'm actually lengthening my spine. Notice I'm not rounding. So I lengthen the spine, shoulder blades towards one another, and I reach my belly button towards my knee. It may not go, that's okay. We do what we can do. Figure out that big toe is reaching towards you. We're gonna bend the knee, right angles here. So knee over the ankle, and we're gonna open up now, just a gentle open. So that foot is gonna open off to the side, just like a book, we're turning the page. So feel a nice stretch. If possible, you're melting your belly forward. Do not force it. You should feel a nice stretch in the inner groin or thigh region. If you are feeling too intense a stretch, just back off a little bit. So we're gonna reach forward. I'm gonna face you again so you can see what I'm doing. Bending that knee, opening, and that foot is opening like a book. So reach forward, again, shoulder blades are back, reaching towards one another. Big smile, and I'm feeling it in my thighs. 
Just tap them out a little bit. You can send some love. Give them some kisses. Wave to the audience. Hello, darling. Hello, darling. How are you? <laughs> Good. And we're going to reach back again. This time we're going to step that leg back. So reach that right leg behind you and across the body. So reach it behind you and across the body. So gaze back towards the back foot. Oh yeah, feel a nice stretch in that low back. This is a way to strengthen your back, strengthen the hamstring, and see if you can pulse up that foot. If you want to get a little more challenge, see if you can bring the other hand. So my right leg is up, my left hand is lifting up as well. You will feel a little challenge with this. This is working the front of the thigh. If it's too challenging, just bring the hand down. If it's too easy, you can always reach back for that foot. Now my hamstrings are a little tight today, so they're not reaching, or not touching, I should say, but that's okay. I just do my best. If you can touch the foot, go ahead and touch it and just reach towards one another. Then slowly release. Good, rock those hips side to side. We are going to the other side. You ready for the dark side? <laughs> We're going to the light now. Let's go to the light. <laughs> We've been in the dark too long. Let's go to the light. <laughs> so we're going to rock those hips again. We're going to step the other leg in front. Again, just reaching. So feel that knee reaching towards you. Toes are pointing towards you here. And sit back first. Sit back. Remember not to hyperextend the leg, so it still has a little bend. It protects that knee. We're going to come forward, come forward, and open up that foot like a book. So that foot rotates out. Feel a nice stretch in that inner thigh. So I'm stretching right here. And if I'm able to bend forward. So from a forward position, I am lengthening my belly. Shoulder blades are reaching towards one another. I'm going to show you from the back view as well. So stay in the pose, stay in the pose. A look at my back. They're reaching, shoulder blades are reaching towards one another. My spine is long here as I reach my belly forward. I'll continue to stay in that pose. Open, open. Reach forward if possible. Reach forward, reach forward. Oh, that feels so good. And then if you're able to come back up, we're going to sit back it back. If you're able to, you can wave that foot side to side. You can tap it down. Good. I love this pose. This is a great stretch for your hamstrings. It also stretches out that back. So tap out that foot side to side. Good. Oh, feels good. Okay. We're going to go back to cat or cat cow again. So hands right underneath that chest. Again, melting that chest down, melting the back. Release. Let the hips Reach up, exhale, gaze inward, big smile, inhale, big smile, ah, oh, yeah, good, exhale, release, let go of any troubles, worries, inhale, bring in joy, cheerfulness, yay, health, happiness, gently rock those hips again, good, circle those hips, circle those hips, good, and the other way. Let's get some shoulder rolls getting in here. So roll those shoulders one direction and then the other. Good. We're going to place the left hand right in the midline and you're going to open up your arms. So open, open, open. Open up those arms. Reach, reach, reach. And then switch sides. Open to the other side. Open, open. Good. Let's do that again. Inhale. And then exhale. Good. This is really good for the shoulders. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up that arm and tuck it under. So you're going to gently, if you can bring the shoulder down, go ahead and do that. If you're able to, you can extend the other arm up. I know you can't see my whole arm, but it's tucked down and just reach, reach, reach. It's a good stretch for that low back. If you want to keep the leg, extend that leg out, you can do that as well. So my left arm is extended. My right leg is reaching away from me, straight out. Good. Nice deep breath in. Good. Nice deep breath in. Good. If you feel like you're going to topple, just bring the hand down. That'll support you. Come back up. I'm going to go to the other side. <laughs> 
feel like saying that a lot. I don't know why. <laughs> it feels good. Okay, just rock those hips first. Remember, no bad days when you're shaking your hips. When you're stretching your body, it's just, oh, it feels so good to release. And this is a nice pulse in that low back. It counters sitting. So if you're slouched in a couch or you're sitting for a prolonged period, this is a nice release in that low back. Nourish that body. Nourish your back. Give it some praise. Thank it for doing all the hard work it does, especially our feet too. Let's tap out our toes. A lot of times when we're on our feet, we're just, again, putting a lot of brunt of the work in those legs. So shake it those legs. Give it some acknowledgement, some love. Mwah, mwah. Thank you. And thank you for my back for holding me erect, keeping me upright. Okay, so let's go to the other side now. So I'm gonna reach the other arm up. Actually, I'm going this way. Reach, reach all the way up, and then we're gonna reach underneath us. Good. Your head, the side of your head is reaching down. I'm gonna extend the opposite leg, and the arm can come up, or it can come around your back. I'm gonna just keep it up, it feels good this way. Whatever feels right in your body. Again, if this is not comfortable, you wanna do it in a chair, you would just do a gentle twist. So you would be sitting and just twisting the body to your left. So you can place your hand on your left knee. Good, come back up. Oh, good. Good, let's get some wrist stretches in there. Really important. Or tend to text, or do you, I guess a better question is, do you text quite a bit or type a lot? I don't really know many people who don't. So texting, typing, but a lot of pressure in the back of the wrist as well as the front. And it also, especially if you're using your thumb quite a bit, that muscle, the thenar eminence, can get used quite a bit. So what we're seeing with hands is that they're getting closer to one another, a little divot in the center, and that could cause spasms. So that muscle can be very tight. You can also feel some discomfort in the forearm, the wrist area, sometimes even the elbow. So really important to nick it in the bud early, do something about it. So massage does help. And when I was reading on John Hopkins website, they were mentioning if you don't do anything for your hand, it keeps getting worse and spasming. There's something called de putrens tenosynovitis. Basically a claw hand can be the result, but it can uh, be thwart thwarted if you, so you don't have to get surgery if you do these stretches. Why not? A fair deal to me. <laughs> and I've had people who've gotten the surgery and their hand still hurts. They don't really have full movement. Because remember, they're just kind of slicing tendons and trying to open up space, but they're not creating those muscle relaxation or allowing those muscles to naturally elongate is what, what we want to do. So we want to train the hand to relax and also counter. If you tend to type a lot, it's fine to voice um, type instead. So voice activate or use a voice memo instead if possible. Um, even with texting, I use my microphone now more. It's a lot easier too. So just gently massage, kind of right in that little V-shaped area between the thumb and index finger. So using that thumb to massage. And then when we go here, we want to start midline in that hand and move out to the side. So really massage that muscle out, open it. See if you can create an open palm as best as you can. Good. Wiggle those fingers. We're going to turn the wrist. So bring that thumb on the back of the hand and just turn the hand towards you so the pinky is facing you and wiggle those fingers. Good. Let's go. Shake, shake, shake. If it's bothering your knees, you can sit down cross-legged. Okay, let's go to the other side. We're just going to twist the wrist first, wiggle those fingers, and then let's do the massage. So again, massaging from the midline, off to the side, open up that palm. Funny face right now. Surprise look. Ah! <laughs> Happy look. Baby face. <laughs> Good. And then massage right in that corner, right between the thumb and index. It is a pressure point. I tend to actually have my husband press here. It feels so good. I've used Chop 64, this soft end, just to kind of get in there. Whatever you could use that's soft and relaxing that kind of massages it. They do have massage tools. They actually have it at my office called a Gua Sha. And that is a, made of jade. It's a, it has a soft edge and that can massage in there as well. It feels so good. So do what you can. Right now we're using our hands, and that's fine. I'm actually using my knuckles. Good. And just kind of shake, shake, shake. Interlace those fingers and rotate. Good. 
good. Back to the hands. Rotate around. Let's go to the side. <laughs> In the center. There we go. And shake, shake, shake. A little facial yoga. Facial yoga. <laughs> okay, so remember with facial yoga, this is a way to soften lines in the face. It's a natural Botox, if you will. <laughs> and it also counters the turkey neck. So if you have some skin hanging or it's starting to hang, we want to tone it up. It helps with our posture, keeps us erect, can reduce our risk for falls. Because remember, anything that's soft, the muscles not toned, we can hunch over. And it's more uh, likely, if we're already leaning forward, to fall forward if the muscles are not tight. That's why uh, strengthening muscles, getting stronger and healthier will be good for you overall. You know, if you actually look at all the evidence of exercise, very little downside, a lot of upside. Even with arthritis, even if it's painful, as long as you're not hurting anything, you keep exercising, you get stronger and the stretches can make a huge difference. So we're gonna um, bring, so remember, we're not jutting that head forward. We're actually gonna tuck that chin to bring it towards the back of the head, bottom lip over your top. So let me show you from a side view. <clears throat> Bottom lip over your top. And then we're going to just pulse up, pulse up. You should feel that platysmus muscle, the front of the neck muscle working. So again, tucking that chin first, gazing up. So lift the chin just a little bit. And then pulse that bottom lip up towards the top. You can do this 10 times, three times a day. Uh, one of the yoga students watching this, she told me she was doing it in her car at a red light. Whatever works, whatever, as long as it's safe. If it works for you, why not? <laughs> I'll do it when I can. If I'm waiting around, it's just a nice exercise to strengthen. Do the same thing with eye exercises too. Good. Now just hold it, bottom lip over your top lip, hold it. And wiggle the chin side to side as you're holding it. Good, so my exercises now, we're gonna look up. Look to your right, your other side, to the left, down. Circle those eyes. Good, look diagonally up. Off to your right, and now off to your left. Down to your right. Good, look nearby. And now pretend there's no walls. Look far in the distance. So if you're outside, just far, far in the distance. If you're in your home, you're, wherever you are, just look past that. So if there's any walls, just look past those walls. Good, big smile here. <laughs> just massage those cheeks. The fall head. The neck. Oh, yeah. Feels good. Back of the neck. Good. Find your spots. Oh, it feels so good. Release, release. Good. So we're going to um, get some stretching in those legs now. This will work the core muscles. And we are going to actually work the four, the back of the arms, the triceps. So um, when I was a kid, I used to see women with a lot of soft skin here, kind of that hanging, what do they call it? Well, we have the turkey neck, maybe the turkey arms, <laughs> whatever. But anyway, it was just not toned. And I was like, I want to have toned arms. You can get strong muscle. We know at any age you can build muscle. The, the idea is we have to work it, but so if you're not used to it, this is gonna take some time, but there are ways you can start to tone up those muscles. So triceps work, you can either have light weights. If you don't have any weights, you can use cans and you literally can just press back. Now, I'm not using weights, but you can pretend that there's some resistance and just pushing back. Good, and then I'm gonna just gently place my hands down so my hands are flat, little bend in those elbows, lift up my hips. Okay, if you want to get some more triceps, you just bend those elbows, bend those elbows. Good, if you're able to, go ahead and kick the leg. Whee! <laughs> Have some fun with it. We're going to do the can-can. Yay! Woohoo! Nice job. Good, now bend the knee and then kick. Bend the knee and kick. One more time. Bend the knee, kick. Bend the knee and kick. Good. Again, you can do this in a chair. Rock those hips side to side. You're still working those triceps because we're holding it ourselves up. And now a little bend in the elbow, a little bend, so micro bend. Now, for whatever reason, if you're not able to do this with your arms because it's too much pressure in your shoulders or your wrists or elbows, you can do this in the air. So you press and push, 
push, push. So you can do this while you're seated. Take some time if you're waiting around. You can get a band and just push that band. So you hold the band behind you and just work to separate that band and then push back. You'll get the same type of tone with your body if you're having some resistance or pretend there's some resistance there. So I'm pushing down, pretending I'm in water and pushing against that water. You can do this in a pool too, which is nice. Okay, so my knees are, are bent. My feet are about hip width apart, just flat. And I'm gonna just rock one knee down and then the other. Just one knee down and then the other. Good. We're gonna cross the foot over the knee, rocking side to side. And again, this is a great core workout. So different options here. You'll also get your triceps working as you're engaged, gauging those arms, rotate around. If you wanna get a little bit more strength, it's gonna work your thigh muscles as well as your belly. So just pulse up. And if you're able to reach over to one side and pulse up. Good, and then over to the other side. Good, now circle around. Whoo, <laughs> it's way too easy. You can keep it just hovering. You can always use it without arms. So if you extend out your arm like this, it'll definitely be, but roll the shoulders back, shoulder blades reaching towards one another. That'll be a little bit more. Woo, and then circle in the other way. Good, just pulse, hold it, you can do it. Good, the legs get a little tight. Make sure you're hydrating, you get enough magnesium and potassium. Potassium is in a lot of different foods. We know avocados are really good. Magnesium are in some whole grains too, but you can take a supplement. It's hard to get a lot of magnesium because it gets used up when we're under stress. We know through the pandemic, a lot of people, it's, it's been very challenging for many of us just dealing with isolation, not being able to do the normal daily activities that we normally do or going places. I know with holidays coming up, it can be challenging, maybe not seeing family or you're seeing, it, seeing them in a different capacity. So cross the foot over the other knee, but I definitely pray for those out there, sending, me, sending you lots of love and health, um, wishes for health and getting through this. You know, it, a few months, uh, in two months actually, yeah, it'll be 2021 and I just pray for a good new year. I want 2020. It's been a, a long, different type of year just to be eventually, I want it to be over <laughs> so we can start a new life. I don't know what 2021 holds, but I'm praying for good things right now. So we're going to rock. Now I'm glad, you know, for me, there has been some blessings, just the time of a reflection. I know people where their families have been close together. If you are spending time with your families more and more, especially with teenagers who we used to all be on the go, not eating together, but it's nice now to actually uh, join. Seeing my husband for me has been a blessing as well. He used to be on the go all the time, working far away um, and on the road. So now I get to see him more, which is a good thing. So there've been some blessings, but I know it's been a lot of challenging times. Let's reach up, pulse up. Ooh. Okay. If you want to engage those arms now, go ahead and do that. Good circle and circle around. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> Whatever noise is coming out. <laughs> good. And slowly release. Oh, feels good. So give yourself a big hug. Mwah. Give yourself a big kiss. Mwah. Mwah. Is that time for self-love? So what are you appreciative of in your body? You know, that used to be a very difficult question when my uh, yoga teacher used to ask us, what part of your body do you love? Now I'm going to say all of it because I'm glad my body works. I'm still here. I'm above ground. But sometimes we can point out stuff that we don't like about our bodies. You know, might have this a little too much or my thighs or something about my face or my hair. But you know what? In the end, it is part of you. It makes you your unique self. So it is beautiful because remember, you are here for a reason and we all are, have our special differences in a good way. So I want you to love your body, love you, and thinking of wonderful things about yourself that you love. So what are some great traits that you love about you? Mm -hmm. Let's take another nice deep breath. We're going to rotate those arms. You can cross 
legs just reach around. Oh, good. And we're gonna just stir that cauldron. There we go. <laughs> Our little witch's brew. <laughs> so radical thought. Imagine a world without heart disease, without cancer, without diabetes. What do we need to do to get to that place? And I was thinking even during this holiday season, I call it the sugar holiday, we can actually switch it, giving out toys instead of candy, water or money instead of, and I found stickers, a hundred stickers for like two bucks. And even Oriental Trading Company, when I purchased some balls for them, from them, 50 balls for like $7, it was free shipping. I was like, yay! So you can really find it economically uh, to get some fun toys for the kids. And then we talked about that switch switch. Yeah, I think my costume is, let me get that. Ooh. So if you missed it earlier, this is one of my Halloween costumes. You'll get a treat this week. I've been dressing up. <laughs> and I'm a happy witch here. So again, thinking of some happy costumes that you can do. But if you haven't heard of the switch witch, she's the one that comes, boys and girls, to your home. And if you put your candy off to the side, she takes the candy and swaps it for your favorite toy or favorite, favorite something that's not sugary. Favorite, it might be money. <laughs> or a favorite poem if you're giving it to a loved one. But she swaps your sugar for something special, a toy and something something from her heart. So I just thought, how, what a great idea. If you're trying to get the kids, they want to still trick or treat, but they don't want all the sweets, you know, get in their teeth. And also we know um, people with diabetes, which is a risk factor is sugar, are at higher risk for having problems with COVID, the, the comorbidities. Diabetes is high on that list. And really important if we can reduce that risk. We know sugar can feed cancers. Um, basically, when they're looking for tumors in the body, they actually inject your body with glucose, which is a sugar, to find the tumor because that's where they'll migrate. Um, sugar can go to all cells, but it really stays um, mostly or uh, migrates. The affinity for the tumor cells is very high for sugar. So that's what they use as a tumor marker or a way to find that tumor. Okay, let's shake, shake, shake. Okay, we are heading to Shavasana. That is final relaxation. This is that time to let go, let flow, and enjoy. I'm actually gonna come to the floor here. You can come to any comfortable position of choice that may be sitting, maybe standing, maybe lying down like me. And if you're nursing any back issues, keep those knees bent. You can roll one shoulder back and then the other. If you wanna open up the shoulders a little bit, you can get a rolled towel and place it right underneath the shoulder blades. Feels nice for opening up the body. I'm just gonna lie down here. Oh, relax. And come to your peaceful place. Your palms can be facing up. If you wanna extend the legs, go ahead and do that. Whatever feels good for your body. Oh, and just breathe. Soften and open. Any thoughts come into the brain, just let them float away like clouds in the sky. This is the practice of control. We're disciplining our mind. We're letting go of unserving thoughts, ruminating thoughts, thoughts that make us get caught up. And instead, wash over our body's relaxation and peace. In your next breath, gently roll to your right side. 
curling into a little ball. Relax the neck and shoulders, relax your head, relax your hips. Using the weight of your arms only to come back up. So we quiet that monkey mind. If it's very talkative all throughout the day or you feel like you're rushed around, that creates can wreak havoc in the body or tenseness. That's the sympathetic nervous system. If you're in hyperdrive, you feel like you always have to be doing something. This is that time giving yourself permission to lower the volume in your head, quiet that monkey mind, quiet the noise. Bring in joy and peace. It makes a huge difference. Create some space. Good. Is a, I want to share another resource. This is from the Environmental Working Group, also known as the EWG. It's a little shopper's guide, and it's called Good Food on a Tight Budget. You can get this online if you go to their website, ewg.org. But it's a great resource for finding healthy foods that are cost effective. Um, one example that they share is if you are getting meat, you want to get 100% grass fed. They also use the term grass finished, but grass fed means that through the entire life of that animal, they've been raised in a pasture, they've been getting uh, grass instead of grain, which can be more inflammatory for the body. So you want them to be fed what animals typically or normally eat in the wild, or obviously they eat other animals too, but, but they typically eat grass too, or what's out in, the, out in those fields. Uh, the other um, part is adding beans. So trying to have some meatless days like meatless Mondays or several times a week, putting in um, some other versions, healthier meat substitutions. And beans and lentils are a great additive. So this week we used our Instapot and we actually made a stew, just one pound of beef, but it lasted us, lasted us for a whole week, which typically that pound would, if we made burgers or something, would only last us one day. So a lot cheaper, you can add beans to it. We added some sweet potatoes, which is good. I put some spinach in there, but if you add some lentils or um, black beans or any beans of choice, that actually adds to the protein value. And beans are really inexpensive. You can get an 18 cents meal if you're really looking. Um, brown rice and beans are complete protein and you'll get a whole grain in your system, but it's, it's one that won't raise your sugars that high. So it's a nice way, and we know if you get a pound of brown rice, I've gotten it for like a dollar or less, or a dollar, I think, 99 cents, maybe it's a dollar, oh nine. And um, the beans, you can get um, lentils, you don't actually have to soak, which is nice. And those you can get a pound for about a dollar. Uh, so nice price, and that's for a pound, so <laughs> you don't need that much for one serving. And that's where you get that 18 cent meal. So if you're trying to cut costs, and I get it, it's, it is challenging times trying to figure out ways or things you can start doing to bring health into your families, um, into your, for your own body, uh, for the new year that's coming up. And even it's okay to start now. We don't have to start on that sugar binge. It takes about three weeks if you are really trying to cut that craving to get the sugar out of your system. And your taste buds do change. So if you wait, don't eat that sugar, don't eat that sugar, especially during the Halloween. You have the toys instead, don't have it in the house. Um, and again, doing what you feel is right, just some suggestions, but it, it's amazing how your brain could be like, do I actually need this? And then it doesn't crave it as much. So I went through a cleanse that really helps and protein actually helps balance out your sugars. So if you're having those nighttime fits of, ah, I need sugar. First of all, if it's in the house, throw it away. We actually did that yesterday. We threw, out, threw away our sugar and candy. Felt so good. <laughs> if you go digging in the garbage, then there's a problem. <laughs> but we threw away our food, our sugary foods, and instead we have some healthy substitutions. Um, real fruit, we freeze grapes or frozen bananas, and we can add that to smoothies or some dates. Our figs have been my kind of go-to foods. But even now, since I've been on that cleanse, I've not even started that on my palate because I was like, I don't, I don't want the sugar right now. And if your body's not craving it now go ahead and great, <clears throat> you don't have to do it. But if you start craving that sugar, getting some help with an expert, sorry, my voice is, need some water. <laughs> <clears throat> but if your body is craving those sweets, 
it probably is because you've conditioned it to do that. And if you have that little you know, Reese's Pieces cup or M&Ms or whatever, but you keep having it every night, it does add up. And we know higher risk for obesity, diabetes, and those are risk factors for cancer. We also uh, know that it is a risk factor for COVID, having the complications of COVID as well. So anything we can do to reduce our risk, keep us healthy and strong. I mean, it also gives us energy, but then it wears off and you crash and your body just wants more. Same with potato chips and all that. I mean, who the heck eats just one potato chip, really? <laughs> okay, so we're gonna conclude, which is a big happy smile, lifting in that chest, bringing in some gratitude, appreciation for your life, for you. What are you grateful for right now? How can you make this an amazing, wonderful day? Remember to start your day. If you're doing it at the end of the day, how can you bring in beautiful sleep? So important. That's the time to repair our body when we're resting. We need to rest so we can fill back our, up our cup so we can take care of ourselves, so we can take care of others. So remember how important you are. You are a miracle. You are a gift in this world. And I just want to cherish you. So sending out lots of love. It's Dr. Gold. Living Institute. Live optimally and thank you for joining us for Inspired Stretch today. And I want to thank the Switch Witch again. <laughs> again, a good witch who will come to your house and swap the candy for a cute toy. <laughs> I'm here to serve you. And there is actually a book called The Switch Witch if you want to check it out. It's so cute. So have a lovely day. Toodles, darling. <laughs>